kei te pūmanawa o Tarawa, te nā koutou e manaki nei, ia tātou e whakapaiti nei i, I rungi te kaupapa o te wā. Uh, ki te kai, wahine kai karanga, tēnā koe nā hau, te reo tuatahi me ki mo te whakaeke nei ki rungi te uh, tāmira. Uh, kia koe te kai kōrero, tēnā koe e hora nei, uh, tō mihi, kia hau, o tira, kia māua ko Todd, mātou kato o te tāhuhu o te mātauranga. Huri noi tō tātou whare, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. A e tikana, me poroporo aki tātou ki a rātou kua mene atu ki te pō, ka tahi nei, ka tanu mia, te tahi whanaunga ki tapu wai haruru, ko e tahi atu hoki. A, nō reira ki a rātou haere, haere atu rā, hoki mai ki a tātou ngā kanohi ora. Good morning and thank you very much for the welcome here today. I'm often reminded when a uh, whakatau, a uh, mihi, a uh, uh, pōhiri occurs and we speak in Māori to each other um, in an audience which largely does not understand Māori. I wonder too often if that's a metaphor for some of our young people in school who have the experience of observing what's going on but not feeling connected or involved or able to be successful and how do we together ensure that Whakatau, as we've just experienced here, the mihi, the use of uh, our indigenous language, whether we are all, how we all work together to make it possible that all young New Zealanders have a fabulous educational experience, that they can see and, and sense their own learning potential, and that you, as the expert navigators, teachers, uh, co-conspirators, co-designers, can work with them to help them see themselves flourish as students, as, as learners, as New Zealanders. Um, I want to thank you all. I am absolutely impressed and inspired by the number of you who are here today who have prioritised these three days to participate uh, in this You Learn Conference 2016. And on that basis, I want to acknowledge Core Education, Derek and all of the team who constantly and consistently strive to be contributors uh, to our education environment and to the wider uh, New Zealand system. I'd like to acknowledge Professor Fullan, te nā koe e te rangatira, te tohunga uh, kei a koe, ngā puke ngā katoa, um, who has not only contributed significantly on the world scene, but is participating and contributing here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and whom I, along with all of you, have had uh, the opportunity to hear some of, just some of, the peaks of work that he and his colleagues are doing that help us all learn. I'd like to acknowledge also the uh, keynote speakers that have provided a feast of thought and, and prov provocative ideas, I hope, for all of you over this period as well. Uh, Larry Rosenstock, uh, Dr. John Couch, and our own Karen Spencer. Um, but mainly I want to acknowledge all of you, and I do wish that photo wasn't up there. Um, not only am I jet lagged, but that's about nine years ago. And look what politics does to you. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm really pleased to be here. Part of the challenge of the, introdu or the, the, um, the presentation that, that Michael Fullan gave was, you know, what do leaders do? And we are all of us involved in some kind of leadership. I'm often asked uh, to attend assemblies and to talk about leadership and to talk about women in leadership. Well, as I've only ever been a woman, I can't talk about what the alternative is. But what I often say to these young people is, first, be powerful leaders in your own lives. If we are powerful leaders in our own lives, the opportunity to therefore contribute is much greater, I think. And so you watch me on the national stage, agreeing, disagreeing with uh, some, all, everything I say. Um, and, and I continue on with my vision and our government's vision of what we want for the New Zealand education system. And so my responsibility, what I do, is focus on system levers because only a government of the day can change legislation. Only the government can look at the overall funding system, at how we invest into initial teacher education and professional learning and development, on how we invest in school property, on what investments we should make in digital infrastructure. Those are all big system levers, and that's what my program of work is about. 
The Ministry of Education and the seven other education sectoral agencies that are within government, NZQA, Aero, um, Education New Zealand, the Tertiary Education Commission, and about three others, their role is to serve you. Their role is to work together to be good stewards of the system. When I first became Minister of Education, all of the narrative about what the role was of government in education um, revolved around this idea called leadership. But I've been very clear that it is the profession that can, be, can only be the profession that leads the profession. It is only the profession, all of you, who can lead learning. It's only you who can lead learning outcomes. It is only you who can lead into the system to inform the sorts of architecture, the sorts of changes that we need to be making. So we play different but complementary roles. And as I say, my role is on these big levers because what I'm focused on is how do we create the conditions in which the ecosystems that are kura, that are schools, that are early learning services thrive be vital and vibrant and create learning for our young people. You're in charge of that. And being involved in these kinds of conferences, these kinds of learning uh, opportunities, these times where you connect and collaborate with other colleagues from across our system are absolutely essential to ensure that you bring the rich, deep learning of the kind that we've been hearing about here, but which is absolutely anticipated in the New Zealand curriculum, in Te Marautanga o Aotearoa, in Te Whāriki. Our curricula are some of the best in the world. You created that. You and your forebear uh, teachers and principals created the richness and the deepness and the potential that lives within those curricula. Now, um, while, while Professor Fullan was talking, there were two or three um, tweets saying, well, I hope the Minister of Education um, is listening to all of this about not being obsessed with targets. I'm not obsessed with targets. I am obsessed with kids learning and getting results and being able to move forward on a life with choices. That's what I'm obsessed with. What the targets reflect is simply the reporting of, of the outcome of all the work that you do. That's all they do. They in themselves, and the way Michael Fullan said, standards don't create professional behavior, professional competence, professional accountability. They simply sit there. They are part of, but not the whole of. And so we have put a lot of work into how in government we create this more flexible, more open, more opportunistic, filled education system. But none of it matters a damn if the profession itself is not focused on how we create and cause learning to happen and how we know that it did, what impact it had, and what does that mean for uh, change, improvement, in order to ensure that every one of our young people gets the best educational opportunities possible. And so that is why, for the first time in almost 30 years, the Education Act is being updated. It is attempting to put young people in the centre at the forefront of all we do. The current act speaks hardly at all of children, of learning, of teaching, of leadership. That's what we're trying to do. But the underlying theme is how do we create flexibility so that you get to make the choices about how and what you deliver in order that young people can be educationally successful. We're reviewing funding because our current funding system is all focused on inputs inputs to the institutions of early learning services or schools. But again, they are important, but they are just physical addresses. The most powerful, the most potent address is this one, located between the two ears. And what the opportunities that our young people get at those physical addresses and beyond them help make this a more powerful, more potential-filled, you know, more possibilities for our young people. So we want to be looking at how does funding more closely align with what's the size of the educational challenge 
not what's the size of the institution. And speaking of institutions, the other thing we've incorporated into the uh, new bill is to provide for communities of online learning. COOLS. It just happens that it has that COOL uh, uh, acronym because it's an extension of the community of learning into the supplementary and complementary role that digital delivery and learning can have for the physical face-to-face -face learning. I've been pretty surprised at the hysteria that arose from that, which said, oh, now we're going to allow five-year-olds to stay at home and just swipe their iPad all day long. Of course that's not what is intended. What's intended is that we take advantage of all the digital technologies, all the infrastructure, all the possibilities that we see, not just here in New Zealand, but we see happening overseas. And I feel a, a strong sense of urgency for us to keep moving to ensure that our young people are not only successful here at home in New Zealand, anchored in their culture, language and identity, but they too can be competent, connected, uh, confident global citizens. I came back on Monday from um, the United States and from Israel. And one of the great things about being able to go overseas, which I have done twice this year, is to be able to look back, get some distance on what it is we're doing in New Zealand and to remind ourselves what a wonderful education system we have. Because too often, at least for me, when I'm here, I'm assailed with what is wrong with our education. I am told what needs to be fixed, what should be better, and all of those kinds of things. And absolutely, we need to continuously strive to improve. But we have a magnificent education system. And I've used this analogy before. We all of us have smartphones, all or most of us. But how many of us use the full functionality of those? I certainly don't, and it's the immense frustration of my daughters. Um, but our education system is similar. It has some of the most sophisticated and elegant architecture of any education system in the world, but we don't yet use all of the functionality available to us. Um, our system change that's going on now is coherent in its intent. Out on the Ministry of Education stand is this little puzzle card that outlines the seven big system leaders, levers that we were working on. So there's legislation and there's funding. There's how do we invest in and lift the status of the teaching profession. The cornerstone of that is the Education Council of Aotearoa New Zealand, but also the transformation of our professional learning and development. Many of you will know that we spent two years um, reviewing our PLD system with uh, a working group from the sector. And one of the striking outcomes of that was for all the investment we'd made in PLD over the years, we could not see what impact it had had. Now, a lot of money goes into PLD, so the new system is now kicking in this year. It relies on evidence of what is happening and what is not within schools and kura and communities of learning. It requires then that proposals are made to a regional panel and that those proposals are anchored in a collaborative approach to growing professional learning and development. In the bottom corner here, I can't actually see it because I don't have, I discovered uh, through all my traveling, I now have five right eye uh, contact lenses but no left eye ones. And since it's the left eye I read with, I can't read at the moment. But anyway, you all can. So you'll be able to um, see this puzzle card. It talks about the construct of communities of learning and just over half of all our schools in New Zealand are now in communities of learning and that accounts for 410,000 students and those communities of learning, none of which are compulsory, are all about systematic collaboration. They are all about local level, level uh, leadership. They are all about what does the data and evidence say about our education challenges and how are we going to focus on them? What pedagogical choices are we going to make in our collaborative community of learning? Not what the minister thinks or the government thinks or anyone else, but what are we as a profession going to do in our community of learning, which by the way, the Maori uh, name for is kahui ako.
So what will you be doing within your kahuyako, your community of learning? Along here is about investing in property. School property is a portfolio of about $23 billion. It is the second biggest portfolio asset on the government's books, um, and it is huge. And we have got, for the first time, a condition assessment of every school building across the country, which allows us to prioritise where we invest. And we are, with you, building better learning spaces, taking advantage of all of the international evidence of what we need to do to have flexible, supportive learning environments. And then there are data and evidences in here, better quality of it. And then right in the bottom corner here is, how do we have better pathways for our young people all the way through their community of learning so that they have better tertiary options uh, when they move off from our compulsory education system? So those are the seven levers of education change that are occurring in our system now. And on the back of that card is the link to each of the foundation documents for that system change. It's there so we can demonstrate how open and transparent we're being about this, this reform, about this continuous improvement process.